So this is the Egg Cup round six. Uh, this map is actually a copy of a different map, but with the HQs replaced with labs. The reason for this replacement is we're going into semi high funds. So income per prop per property is 1.5 thousand instead of 1,000. So the HQs were removed and replaced with labs to not give player one too much of a income advantage, like a first turn advantage of getting money first. So I'm player one. I of course go for my neutral base first. I considered choosing Javier for this map because of the comm towers, but I decided if I picked that, my opponent would definitely try to stop me from getting the second, the third comm tower. You can pretty safely get two, and it will be rather difficult to get the third one. But the main reason why I wanted Hachi instead of Javier was I wanted to build pipe runners. I saw how many pipes there were on this map. I saw how pipe runners could shoot over the pipe while hiding safely behind the pipe. They had pretty decent movement, being able to slide along the pipes rather quickly. So that's why I picked Hachi instead of Javier. And another thing is mega tanks are just so strong. Like, if I can get mega tanks for 1800 with under my super, it doesn't matter how many, com well, it does matter how many comp towers Javier gets, but I highly doubt Javier with two comp towers would be able to stand up against mega tanks. Perhaps he might sacrifice a few recons to get it out of ammo and then come in with the neo tanks, but I don't see that happening. And that would just hurt his unit count because unit count is important and you definitely don't want to just throw it away. So I built a black boat. I considered going up to the comm tower or maybe the neutral city, but seeing as this map is a two base versus one base kind of map, I decided I'm going to send it to the one base because I want to win on my two versus one side faster than my opponent wins on his. So I'm just going to apply as much pressure onto that one base. But uh, look, thinking of this now, I probably should have just went for the neutral property above my tiny little peninsula. He went for my comp tower, which yeah, fair enough. I could just build a recon to deal with it, but yeah. I went for his single base here. I wanted to apply as much pressure as possible. Uh, I notice his uh, infantry here could interrupt my infantry, but I have an artillery here. I wanted to play defensively on my single base front. So I built an artillery. And he decides to go in anyway because he knows that... Well, if I try to capture it, he can just shoot my infantry. And he was probably thinking if I killed his infantry, his tank could then reach my artillery. At least that was the plan. I would assume that was his plan. I did something similar for him, except this time he doesn't have an artillery. I, his artillery could also hit my infantry here if I withdrawn. So I guess this was actually a pretty decent play here. Pretty good play actually. And my infantry here is just dead. Perhaps it was not the best idea to move it in here. 
I even considered moving in mechs, but then these infantry are not going to let me land at all. So I shoot down that infantry and blocked his tank. His artillery can still shoot at my other infantry, but I'm not going to be down in unit counts. So similar to my previous egg cup match, I wanted to spam battle copters. So before I could do that, I must get rid of his missile, which can currently only be hit by a rocket from this distance. I guess if you're playing Javier, your battle copter wouldn't would be rather safe from the indirect, so I guess that's another plus to play Javier. But mega tanks are still just too strong. Okay, I move my rocket here. It can hit the rock, uh, the missile, and then after hitting the missile, I can move down to support my two v one attack. I finish capturing these properties, and to deter his tank from attacking me, I place my artillery to protect it. And I actually go on the offense here. I suppose I know that his medium tank and his tank could probably take on my forces, but I thought because I have two bases to, to his one base, uh, I will eventually win. I would so I just I should just trade down his defenses. He moved his rocket here to hit my missile, but he also moved it there to hit the pipe seam, to perhaps get air units to defend his bottom base. So as expected, he moves in to attack me. It's probably winning. Uh, he's probably getting a good exchange over here, but I wanted to trade down his units because I know trading down when I'm a, when I have more bases is beneficial for me. And as soon as I get rid of the missile, I built the bomber because why not? I can afford it, I'm Hachi. I know his medium tank can hit my artillery, but I thought it's fine because trading units is fine. He destroys my missile. And pretty standard. Nothing out of the ordinary, I would say. I will get I get a nice shot here. Um, well, I say nice, but it's only an infantry. But I wanted to apply more pressure onto his space, so I'm going to tr continue trying to land, I suppose. And this time, I it's covered by a rocket. So I go in, I was like, I got this artillery, I got my rocket moving down to help. I'm sure I'll be fine over here. And I got a bomber here as well, so. But what I haven't been paying attention to is the power bar. My opponent could re reach uh, his superpower next turn, and he does. I didn't think he would actually reach my artillery, but I should have seen that coming. Still, uh, I'm feeling... Hmm. At this point, I realize I'm probably not winning right now. He even moves his tanks on my property just to deny me from using it to build stuff. Okay, so the replay is actually bugged a bit. <laughs> it said he had negative money a while ago, but that's just because of the reduced unit price. So I block, I join my tanks to block my bomber from his anti airs. And I notice a little afterwards that he could probably wall break with his anti wall break my infantry with his anti-air and then attack my rocket but if he did that he would be throwing away both his anti-air and my bomber would rain uncontested so 
I didn't really uh, care too much if he were to break my lines. Uh, I considered popping my super this turn, but I didn't have the money. Well, I did, but I wanted to maximize my potential, so I just built one tank and the rest just foot soldiers. And and now, and next turn I use my super where I can get more benefits from it. Okay, his rocket broke the pipe seam, so his battle, so it looked like his battle copter went through, but his rocket actually shot at the pipe seam. Eh, he also used his super to build a missile here to air block, to block my airport. To missile lock my airport. Uh, it's it's a good move. I mean, I would have done the same. And this time, now that I have the money, well, first I would make my turns before building. And here it comes, three pipe runners. The thing, uh, I could have used a missile to airport lock this. But I wanted to the ability to the, to lock the airport and support on the ground. So this one I could shoot at his missile if I want if he doesn't move it away. But it also I could also uh, shift it upwards, maybe at a corner to to support my top front if I wanted to. But his artillery, he has so much artillery here that this pipe runner doesn't actually get to move up. I move my infantry in a way, in the way to block it, block the battlecopter from my pipe runner. He could still reach my rocket if he wanted to, but that would just be throwing away a battlecopter. I mean, yeah. Don't know what else I can say about this. It's very chaotic. I don't know what's good and I don't know what's bad. I never played on this map before, but I, I got pipe runners now. Fortunately, I didn't. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough money to build everything I wanted. But I say I got a better deal from my superpower. And here. At this point, I accept that I lost my base up here. I'm just going to focus down his bottom base. And this actually surprised me. He reached my bomber, which was also pretty devastating. So I'm just straight up losing now. I got pipe runners. Hopefully they can turn them around. But uh, unit count and unit value speaking, I'm behind. So I'm just going hyper aggressive on the bottom part. I wanted to. I considered shooting down this battlecopter instead, but I realized his missile can destroy the pipe seam, and a healthy battlecopter will can hit my pipe runner anyway. So I'm just going to kill health the healthy battlecopter instead of the 9 HP one. Hmm. But yeah, I accept that I just lost this base, so I might as well try to be annoying about it. And I also decided I need some wall breakers. So a Neo tank it is, a Neo tank. It's a good thing I occupied these cities so he can't just build units on them. That would be that would, I would just lose after that. So seeing this has huge advantage over me right now, I decided there was only one thing I could do to win, and that is use my Hachi Super in as great of a use as I possibly can. Get, get, to maximize my benefits from it. So that was my plan right now. As well as just cap finish capturing this base if I can. So in order to get a strong Hachi Super, I need to 
get more income. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make up for my lost income up here. And why not just threaten? He's going to break the pipe seam soon if I don't do anything up here. So I decide to move my pipe runner up. It might be a mistake though, because if he uh, organized his artillery in such a way, he could break through the pipe seam and have a tank ready to cross. So I'm, I'm kind of worried that he might break through. But for whatever reason, it looked like he was planning to move his tank through this pipe instead of the top pipe, which means I still have more time to fight on the bottom before his reinforcements from the top arrives. Okay, he tries to take that comm tower again, which once again, I have to build a recon to deal with it. Might as well get a shot here. If my bomber's dead, so what? My bomber, I have to move my bomber away, otherwise the anti-air will shoot it. And I'll just move a medium tank instead, where it will be the next one to block the pipe. This transport copter, uh, I suppose it could be used to uh, maybe try to sneak it through the middle or take my property over here but I was but uh, because I had nothing else to shoot with my pipe runner I might as well I decided to just shoot the transport copter and I built some mega tanks I thought it was the only way to break through here and it probably is and this is the primary reason why I, I decided picking Hachi is better than picking Javier. Mega tanks are just so strong. And more pipe runners. To be honest, uh, I wasn't really sure what I was thinking too much. We did play this game like a live game again, even though we totally didn't have to at all whatsoever. But we, we played this as a live game. He broke through the pipes. And because he moved his tank the other way, he was unable to hit my pipe runner with a tank and had to settle for an anti-air instead. So down here, he actually sacrificed both his heavy vehicles to so he can use a super and build a a mega tank, which fair enough, you have to, I mean a mega tank is very hard to deal with if you don't have a bomber, and my pipe runner here is locking that airport down. Strangely enough, uh, he could have built a battle copter here for for a very cheap price just to make it harder for my pipe runner to choose a target because it's been shooting every single turn but for many of those turns I wish I had I wish I was able to shoot more targets well a different target there were basically too many targets to choose from and each of them are troubling but uh, yeah, just going to keep pushing, doing what I can. I decided to focus on the artillery because the artillery will probably be most dangerous to my pipe runners. And I just, just you know, block him. Stall as much as I can and to try to take this base before reinforcements arrive. I did not get the, the luck roll to kill it. Well, probably it was impossible now that I think about it. But I could try. And I knew I had to be very aggressive now because if I don't win now, I will. If I don't win on the bottom front now, I will just lose. So I'm going in. I decide to seal off my opponent's mega tank. Yeah, just surround it. 
and my APC. It was there to just resupply my air units and my mega tank, but it can also. But uh, getting more infantry to the front line is also good. It means more walls against his vehicles. But at this point, uh, he doesn't have his super or his normal power anytime soon, so I'm thinking I still have a chance to win this. So he's targeting my infantry to delay my capture. Fair enough. Uh, I'm not sure if the... Yeah, it's a, I say it's a fair move. And he built another missile because I I believe he knows that he can't move his missile away without getting shot by without freeing my airport. So another missile up here would continue to lock my airport. So my battlecopter spam isn't coming anytime soon. But might as well continue this. If you notice, uh, starting from this turn, I will be spending very minimal on my on my bases. I want a great and powerful super to turn the battle around. So I built three infantry this turn, and that's it. Yeah. And once that anti-air is gone, I just put the bomber here to block the pipe again. Hmm. Ooh, my brain is getting tired. I, I'm running out of things to say. This, this map is just very chaotic. So, okay. I began destroying his, I just destroyed his mega tank. <laughs> move my bomber one space back to be out of range of his anti-air, so he still can't move through the pipe. And I begin capturing, of course I block his cities, I, I don't want him to get a super and just bond more units, or build more units. I protect my comm tower, I destroy his missile, but it's too late, his other missile is already here to airport lock me again. My, uh, this pipe runner might not look might not seem like it, it did a lot, but it's really stopping his air his battlecopter from moving down the other entrance because yeah, I say this is totally a worth a worthwhile investment. Many times I did want to move it one tile over, but that will expose it to the battlecopter and put it in range of the rocket. So, but now that I win, I won my 2v1 side, I can start pushing upwards just like he's starting to push downward. And once again, I built only three infantry in my previous turn and nothing else, so... Wait, did I say that already? Eh, doesn't matter. I have 75,000 money in the bank right now, and I threw away a tank to get my power. So, but before I actually pop my power, what I did was I wanted to join my, meg my mega tanks. My mega tanks are still worth at 90% value right now. So if I join them and then pop my super, I could proceed to build the mega tank back at the 50% cost. So I'm going to join my mega tanks to get all that in to get all that income. I join my infantry to get that extra money. And I just continue joining infantry because I know if I get rid of because it's more valuable to join them now than during my super I was like and they'll ask for why I moved my new tank here this rocket's out of ammo but I should have seen his APC was nearby 
So this was kind of a mistake on my end, but it's fine because I get to block him for another turn. Now's the Merchant Union. Mega Tank, Pipe Runner, um, Battleship, more Pipe Runner, another a missile here. Yeah, like I said earlier, I wanted this to be able to shoot at other things other than just the airport, so I needed something else to do airport lock. More pipe runners, more mega tanks, just all around. I mean, look at my unit value. Because of all the money I saved, I'm almost double his value. And I even I even destroyed my 1 HP infantry just to because I reached unit limit and I wanted to build another infantry. So I believe this is the turn where I went from losing to winning because now I have way more value. Now this his rocket was out of ammo so I thought I should move my pipe runner closer. It's a good thing I built more pipe runners. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. It's a good thing I built more pipe runners. And this is, uh, he wants to attack right now. He knows that if he just stands still, I will eventually break through. So he moved a lot of his rockets in range of my pipe runners. And we are now having an indirect standoff against each other. His rockets are cheaper than my pipe runners, but he plans to just overwhelm me with numbers. Still... I say the pipe runners are a good investment and it's what won me the game. It allowed me to stall this pipe for so long. It allowed me to airport lock him and support me in the ground attack. Not much else to say, just destroying his air units. I go for the rockets on the cities first because I don't want them to heal up but also because the rockets on the non-cities are less defended for my other units that may try to break through and my battlecopter is still alive which I'm happy about because now it can support my attack whereas he doesn't have any air units So, I'm feeling pretty confident. I want to add, attack as much as possible. Built another black boat to send more infantry to break through down the bottom, on the right side. And even moving my infantry so I can it can walk over the river to attack a rocket. So, we're both doing all out attacks caring little for the safety of our units, just trying to get as much damage done to break the stalemate. Because the stalemate will be broken, but it can only be broken with... with blood and iron. So... Don't know what, what else to say here, really. Just continue attacking. I moved my rocket up here, maybe I wanted to put it on a shoal, but perhaps I should have just... I don't know what to do with this rocket really, maybe I should have built a lander so I can move it elsewhere. But similar to, similar to my opponents, I decided to also start attacking with little care to my units. I tried to break that infantry so I can reach that artillery, but on, it's actually a good thing I didn't break that infantry because now his medium tank, well his mega tank can't hit, can't hit my mega tank. So, right now we're equal in property, so as of right now, if we reach day 30, we would just get a draw because there's a dirty day 
there's a 30 day limit here. But uh, I'm feeling confident. I got two mega tanks here and one mega tank here. Mega tanks take very little damage from indirects and my opponent can't build a bomber. Don't know what else to say about this. We're just attack, desperately attacking each other right now. But my opponent did resign here. And he didn't manage to break all my pipe runners here. But... Hmm. I would have started building pipe runners of my own up here to support my to support an attack. Eh, I don't blame my opponent for resigning because I can easily break the bottom much e I have an easier time breaking the bottom than he will breaking my top because I'm about to get my super again. I can join these two mega tanks. To, so that they both still have ammo and I and just build a new one. His rocket can't exactly reach my units if I move them back. But yeah, that was round six of the Egg Cup. I'm currently on round seven. I don't believe I will win round seven. And even if I do win round seven, I, I might get matched up with Tordred in round eight, so... There's no way I'm surviving this tournament for much longer. But yeah, that was round six of the Egg Cup. I'm proud that I made it through the entire original six rounds in the Cup. But let's see if I can just win round seven. Just one more win before I inevitably get removed either by my current opponent or by Tortured in round eight. Okay, and thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you next time.